What's going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now, I love it when you guys send me recommendations of things to cover for videos, because obviously that makes it kind of easier for me, and it makes sure that you guys are getting exactly what you want. And one project that's been sent to me over and over again is a brand new Kickstarter. Now, I know we just covered the Mecha Comet, which I think is really, really cool, but this is something completely different. Although, actually, in some ways, it's kind of similar. What we're talking about is the Interrupt. It's a Linux-based hacking gadget by Interrupt Tech. Now, I've been seeing this thing everywhere. I've had a ton of people send it to me, plus it shows up in almost all of my feeds. So with that much publicity, I definitely gotta check it out. So that's enough intro, let's get at it. All right, so anytime we do a Kickstarter video, I feel like I have a responsibility to give you a bit of a disclaimer. Remember that Kickstarters are not a guaranteed product. These things come and they go, and sometimes they're just a complete scam. We've seen it before with the Cypher Pro, and we're still waiting on you, M1 by Monstatech. Editing Sasquatch here. Legit, like an hour after I filmed this video, Monstatech dropped a teardown video of the M1. So at this point, I'm saying the M1's gonna happen. So just be patient with that one. Gotta love when Kickstarters actually come through check out this video it's crazy this video shows the entire teardown you can see where the ir board is we can see where the sub gigahertz board is the nfc board on the back the battery's got its own little holder and it looks like it has an injection molded case there's no way you're going to spend the money on an injection molded case if you're not putting these into production so they've gotten this far with it i'm sure they're going to be sending these out but if you don't have money to literally burn do not put your money in kickstarter I feel like that's become one of my new catchphrases. It's like, if you don't have money to burn, don't put it in Kickstarter, don't be a skid, and PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for PCB design, manufacture, CNC, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and more. No matter what your project is, PCBWay can help you. They have engineers on staff that will help you every single step of the way. It literally can't be easier. So if you've got a project that needs to come to reality, PCBWay has got you covered. Thank you so much to PCBWay. You guys have been absolutely the best. Let's get back at it. Come on, that was a good segue. I, I, I think I nailed that one. But yeah, as far as Kickstarters go, remember if it actually goes through and they make the thing, you can buy it retail. You're not gonna save a ton of money. Maybe you'll get a little earlier, but still. Kickstarter does not have a great track record with hacking devices. It's basically been like the Flipper Zero and the BLE Shark Nano that actually made it through. And apparently the M1 by Monster Tech. Anywho, let's hop on down to the desktop and take a look. All right, so if we pull up the Kickstarter right here, we can see what we've got. Now, again, I film videos a week ahead, so this is going to have about a couple weeks left to it when you guys see this video, and I'm sure the pledge is going to be a lot higher than the $400,000 they have gained already. Now, keep in mind, they started with a $10,000 goal. Uh, that's not a lot. Like, I don't think they could possibly make a product with only $10,000 worth of investment. So that's a little bit questionable of a goal. I think it's kind of low, if I'm being totally honest. So I guess, you know, first things first, we'll just go ahead and take a look at the video. All right, let's go. First things first, they always seem to use the exact same audio. I swear, this is the same exact audio from the M1 by Monster Tech, or it's really, really close. I know they have to show off all the things that they do, but these all feel exactly the same. Yeah, he's opening up a garage door. Would have been more fun to have a little bit of like, you know, rays, like some sort of graphic coming off of it. Just a little bit more visually appealing, but either way. Okay, actually, let's rewind this for a second. Okay, so this shows the main menu of this right here. I was actually looking to see if they had a similar spelling error as the Cypher Pro. I thought that'd be really funny if it said like NCF again. But yeah, it basically just shows all of the menu structure on there. It says UART for SSH and then ASCII, which is a little weird. We've got kind of a normal menu going on, but let's continue. So it does have a touch screen, which is, I think, kind of cool. I don't know if that's like super, super useful. I mean, obviously you have other controls. There's a lot of controls on this device, but you know, not gonna fault the touch screen. Now they're trying to show off NFC or yeah, I'm assuming that's NFC. If you look really closely, I think that's a 3D printed keyboard on there. Uh, that wouldn't be super surprising because they're in prototype stage, but I don't know, just something I noticed. Oh, 
and it's packed full with a plethora of capabilities and functionalities, both of them. <laughs> and yeah, now you can see even closer that the, it's got 3D printed keys on there. Originally, I was thinking this was ChatGPT, but honestly, ChatGPT has gotten pretty darn good at letters and numbers nowadays. So uh, I think that's just 3D printed, but maybe I'm wrong. Now I'm assuming they're showing off it emulating a card to use an NFC card or maybe sub gigahertz, one of the two. But again, this is all pretty standard issue stuff. We've seen it on pretty much all of these devices so far, uh, but you know, either way. I also don't know why, I don't know, maybe it's because the skids just love controlling stuff with the uh, IR, but they always really lean super heavy into IR. They show her turning channels forever, but like, that's like one of the least useful things for all of these devices, because aside from your TV, or if you're a kid, you're messing around with like monitors at your school, don't do that, don't be a skid. But unless you're doing that, you're really never using the IR. Okay, cool. So it's got a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, so it's wireless. It has, you know, wireless. Sub gigahertz frequency range, RFID, uh, infrared transmission and receiving, GPIO, a tactile keyboard, and an SD card slot. That's a good amount of stuff. Okay, so that's the Kickstarter video. Uh, not a whole lot there, uh, but I don't know. Sometimes I feel like these should be more of a tech demo as opposed to all of these hacking gadgets. The videos are exactly the same. I mean, that looks exactly like the M1 by Monster Tech. It looks exactly like the Cyper Pro. They all pretty much have the same exact video. All right, so I guess moving on, let's scroll down. Again, with the time of recording, which is a week before you're seeing this, it's got 2,000 backers and $400,000. That's a lot of money. And again, that $10,000 goal, I believe is a bit sus. I've been watching Kickstarters for a little while, and if they really needed to generate money to make these things, 10,000 is not a lot, especially for how complicated this device could be. So either way, let's keep scrolling. So do to do. So the size, it's a nice size. I mean, that's, that's a pretty, you know, it's a little big for pocketable, I want to say, but I don't know. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I mean, basically, if you think about it, that's just a Hackberry Pi with some more sensors on. So let's keep scrolling. Whoops, that's not the right part. Let's keep scrolling down here. It's a compact, versatile device engineered for cybersecurity experts and technology enthusiasts, boasting a playful, gadget-like design. Okay. Its core mission is to use Linux and its tools to navigate and interrogate. Uh? What the The digital terrain, navigate and interrogate the digital terrain. That's different. Encompassing radio frequencies. So one of the things about this that I see is probably a lost opportunity because if you have sub gigahertz on here and you have Linux, you have an SDR. So they don't even have an SDR on this. Uh, so a software defined radio they could i theoretically run like sdr plus plus or something on this platform and then make it kind of like a hack rf so that seems like a really really obvious missed opportunity right there but again maybe i'm just reading this wrong Let's keep scrolling down we've got infrared yeah all those things cool and then this is what it looks like we've seen it no problem uh let's see small and compact we know we saw that earlier a uh, three and a half inch color display. Again, the display size is kind of nice. The whole thing is a little clunky. It's a little big, especially for the fact that everything it seems like you can do on there, you can accomplish with a touch screen. So I don't know. Let's keep moving. Uh, okay. We're just going to go over the, the fact that it can open doors again. Sub one gigahertz. Okay. Sub gigahertz. We know. Um, RFID, TX. Okay, this is what I wanted to touch upon. So this is GPIO. One of the things that really irks me about these projects is when they don't have well thought out things. So they've got GPIO on there and we all know if you're gonna make GPIO, people are gonna make GPIO cards for the device. The thing you don't want to do with GPIO is have them in one straight line. That's what Cypher Pro did. That's where I, I started thinking, maybe this isn't real because you don't want to have just a straight line because if you plug something in upside down, it's going to explode. It's bad. So you want to have like a like three and two or something like that. You don't want to have a straight in a line. So seeing that right there means that this device is not as well thought out as people might think. So that is a little bit of a means of concern for me. We've got our keyboard. 
record. You know, these are just renders. That stuff's easy. I'm um, talking about it being open sourced. So they talk about it being designed for people who like to tinker. And I love open source projects. I like being able to print my own stuff. I like being able to, you know, customize it however I want. And obviously it's running Linux. So because it's running Linux, you can theoretically do a lot of stuff with it. I mean, it's only a Raspberry Pi 2W, but you can run Kali on that if you really want to. So of course they show a Linux terminal right here, which obviously, because you can run Linux, you can run a Linux terminal. And I guess that makes sense why they have a keyboard, but I don't know, it seems like you could do a lot more with this device than they're showing because again, you're running Linux. Keep scrolling down and they show more terminal stuff. Again, that's perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that at all. See what else. And now we're showing some more of the operating system that we were looking at earlier. And although now that they show the operating system, they cut off the words underneath there. I'm not sure why. Again, these are probably renders. These are all kind of early stuff. I do believe this is a really early project, but since they're actually holding devices that are basically working it does seem like they should have a little bit more stuff thought out because again this is a hackberry pi this is a device that actually exists already actually planning on making one in a video as soon as i can hopefully working with alley cat on a little project don't tell anybody except for well never mind but anyway let's keep going um yeah again it's all the same stuff that you see on everything else linux os and touchscreen those are two new features for this product uh again i'm not sure how useful a touchscreen is going to be when you have the full tactile keyboard again it's hard to say keep scrolling down there's only a 2000 milliamp hour battery for effectively a hackberry pi that's not gonna last very long especially with a screen like that we'll have to see but Normally when you're running like a 2000 milliamp hour battery, you're doing something like a ESP32 based device. Even those use a lot of power or something like a Ponegachi, like this guy right here. This thing goes flat pretty quick. Like there's only a few hours and this is e-ink. So yeah, ups upside down. This one's got Bjorn on it. Bjorn's awesome. If you haven't watched my video on Bjorn, watch it download beyond play around with it it's such an awesome project i absolutely love that one all right so beyond that let's look at the rest of the specs again this is everything that we thought we'd see before storage card sd card abs plastic case that all makes sense uh moving on so we show the conception started in december of 2023 so it actually it's not been that long it's been like what a year and a half they did the researching the first prototype was in may of last year and then the second prototype was in august and then marketing research was in december 2024 i feel like the payoff for the marketing research is actually coming on right now because this has been absolutely blowing up everywhere that i see it like i've seen like instagram ads for i swear it's everywhere so that brings us to the kickstarter so we want production prep to go May, July, which is going to be right after the Kickstarter ends, which makes sense. Mass production, August, September, and then shipping October, November. Watching these projects, that seems like a really, really steep time frame. I know how long it takes to go from, you know, prototype to shift. And from the things that we've seen, it's like a year plus. So I would be absolutely baffled if they were able to actually ship these things out October, November. But hey, I've been wrong before. These things happen. It says the interrupt is on its final stages of development with hardware design locked in and software refinement well underway. So it seems like they know what they want to do and they're just kind of fixing up the software from here. Um, they're testing components refining radio signal handling which actually is kind of a big deal i know the m1 they said they were making metal cases was that the m1 or was that cyber pro they just get mixed up in my head nowadays but somebody was like yeah we're gonna make a metal case for this and that's not gonna be super friendly for your uh, rf stuff but i don't know we'll see so what else keep going here and yeah, so they've got some PCB images. They've got some more renders, the keyboard. Yeah, I mean, it's all those things work. That makes sense. Uh, keep going. Contact for business. Okay. Risks and talent challenges. Yeah, so this right here is the biggest red flag I've run into. And this was, as soon as I saw this, I was like, okay, I actually want to talk about this now. Because again, for the amount of press this has been getting, the amount of people that have been sending this to me, this is a big red flag and it says COVID-19. Now it is 2025. COVID happened in 2020. So this part is a little bit weird, right? It says our main concern is the safety of our team and partners. Good. We will be closely following government guidelines, including temporarily pausing operations if deemed necessary. Now, I don't think there's any part of the world that's going to talk about closing anything for COVID anymore. So where did this come from? This project started in December of 2023. Why are we still talking about COVID? 
We're working closely with our manufacturer, warehouse, and fulfillment partners to keep all of our backers informed well in advance of any delays. Regardless of any interruptions, we will work to make sure that you get your order with no compromises on safety or quality. Now, that is an absolutely huge red flag for me. Now, maybe it's copy and pasted from something else, but you shouldn't have errors like this, or you shouldn't have weird things like this in your Kickstarter. Now, they do mention tariffs, but they don't really lean on the tariffs as much as you might think they would, because tariffs are gonna change the price of this product absolutely dramatically. Because currently, at $179, I have to assume most of the electronics is sourced from China, and we all know how those tariffs work. This thing would be a lot more expensive when you get hit with that tariff bill. So. I would have to assume, even if this is all real and everything like ships out, when you get your 179 device, it's gonna come with a bill and it's gonna be a lot of money. So that's another one of the things that's really unfortunate about everything. I'm waiting on a U console right now by a Clockwork Pi. I'm super, super psyched about it, but I'm a little concerned. Now, I don't think they're gonna ship mine until like August, but if they ship it right now, I'm gonna end up with a bill that's more than the cost of the device most likely, which is gonna be kind of lame if I'm being totally honest, not a fan of that. But yeah, the fact that they have this whole paragraph about COVID, that is probably one of the biggest red flags of this entire project. Because at the end of the day, yeah, this is really just a Hackberry Pi. These things exist. Keep scrolling down, see if there's anything else. Uh, long lasting design, sustainable materials. Yeah, I think all of this stuff is basically just copy and pasted from something else. And if I'm gonna make a product and I'm gonna put my entire effort into it, and again, these projects, I mean, I know people that make boards, I know people that make all sorts of stuff. The people making a hack all rough, those guys, there's so much attention to detail. They love these projects. They have so much passion for these projects. If I saw copy and paste and stuff like that, it just really brings up red flags. It's just like Cyper Pro. Cyper Pro pulled pretty much all of their documentation from Flipper Zero. That's super, super sus. You know something's wrong here. And then they completely disappeared. So seeing copy and pasted stuff on here, that is just one of the biggest red flags ever. But yeah, there you have it. That's the interrupt by interrupt tech. I wish I had more to show you guys, at least with the Mecha Comet, they had all sorts of stuff. They had technical documents. They had a lot of stuff. Now, I know they are much later in their product cycle than these guys are, but still. Now, I also haven't actually priced out what a Hackberry Pi would cost to build, but it probably sits right around the same amount of money. And actually, yeah, I found over on Tindy, they've got Hackberry Pies going for like $130. Now, granted that these are actually not available right now because they're taking a break and they don't have all of the features like NFC and sub gigahertz, but it kind of goes to show you where these things start. Anyway, I just really wanted to cover this product because it's absolutely everywhere and I'm a little bit suspect of the project in general. Now, I really, really don't want to put down anybody's project, especially if it's going to come to reality, but I've just been getting more and more suspect of these Kickstarters because none of them really seem to be making a product. Anyway, what do you guys think about the interrupt? Leave a comment down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. You guys are absolute legends and we'll catch you next time.